nighttime stream. Got four nine max, and so far one six. And I'm on a bunch of lists, so should be able to jump out pretty easy. Uh, down like 140 today, so I guess coming in at 3080 or 4080 about. And we'll just go from there. Let's see, can I get another six max going? Uh, this one's got a seat. thing up. just start doing it. I don't know. Like, just this week, all of them are running this, like, all these Christmas slot machines. Hmm. So I don't know Christmas in July. <laughs> you know it's almost over. <laughs> We've been doing this all month. Just a showdown bet, but it works. Six max going. Damn. Three bit by Fang. Don't think we want to fold for half pot. Nine on the turn is nice. <sighs> Did he really have an overpair? I'm kind of. He did, he had queens. I thought he might have been done with it, but usually he can keep betting. I guess we just call here. I'm going to click him back. He's either got something he can continue with or he doesn't. Most likely scenario is he's got a heart draw, but I think we have to jam. Ha! Hey, babe, you remember what I was saying about my luck? Just flopped aces full versus quad sixes. 
I had two aces in my hand, he had two sixes in his hand. Came off ace six six. I think raising on the flop, sea betting here is fine, or uh, barreling here is fine. Jack on the river is kind of great, but he can definitely have 9-10. I think we're supposed to look like we're bluffing, so I'm just going to go ahead and bet. Because he shouldn't have a 9 very often. So this is thin, but I like it. I think it was close.
Checky. It ain't bad. Well, I think we're definitely bad here. I think we can lead this one. Man, it's thundering out there again. This is so annoying. He's got a penny left, so I guess I gotta put him in. He had a nine. Yeah. Well, I'm right to call it off. <clears throat> Seriously, bro. Jack right there. <clears throat> That's annoying. Should have bet smaller on that flap, although I think he hit the ace, so I should have bet smaller. Out. I'm getting pushed down the list.
people are acting slow today. Um, I guess we just check this now, right? Good catch. Snail. It's a weird name. Yeah, I keep getting pushed to the bottom of these lists. I don't understand. I joined this thing when it had four people on it. Now I'm eight of eight. What the fuck? Fives are nice. Player bets a full pot, I guess we call. Eight on the river, awesome. Not only does that kill action, it also possibly beats me. Could I have gotten the bluff? Nope, he had pocket fours. So, he got counterfeited, my action got killed. Fun! This is a shitty run out right there. Not like too many of the runouts are going to make him lose his mind, but some of them might. Like a five would, if another five showed up, or like a, uh, even an ace. If he's going to bluff, he might keep bluffing at an ace. Guess we just power bomb this. Because this fucker ain't going to fold. Same theory. Yuck. Call by the button. Like people are calling full pot bets on the flop and then folding turn. I mean, this might be just have to be the evolution. This might be the way to go. I think it might just have to just power bomb every C bet. Could have checked that turn, but I feel like if he's calling with anything, it's a fucking flush draw. Like, what is WD? Uh, withdrawal. I had to make withdrawal, so I kind of, I kind of ended up handicapped on my way to 10k. But we're not going to be doing that anymore. Hopefully, we'll be playing 100 NL soon. I like just calling these sometimes, especially when this guy's super short. Uh, let's just go ahead and 3-bet here. This player is very aggressive, so... I'm getting 5D Cat Eye Nail Polish. Nice. I have some of that. This is why, because he's just going to jam everything. Killed my action, but it's whatever. Am I topping out at 50 and L then? No. Uh, we're obviously just trying to go up and up and up. Wow, that is a kind of a large bet. I kind of don't like this out of position. I'm going to let it go. Got shot in a flush draw. We will absolutely bet that all day. 
And that's the idea is that, you know, uh, get to 5k, play 100 NL, and then, you know, as time goes on, you get up to higher and higher. Basically, uh, when I can start playing that, then I can also start playing larger buy-in tournaments. And on WSOP, there's a lot more that are $100 buy-ins than there are $10 buy-ins, right? Because it's always buy-in, rebuy, and add-on until you get to a certain level. So, like, there's $50 freeze-outs. I play those, but there's only, like, one of those a day that goes off. <clears throat> there might be nine total of them in a week. Uh, so it's like, it, it's kind of hard to like get any volume in, but there's quite a few 100 NL freeze outs and re-entries. So that's kind of the format I'd rather stick to because I don't want to, how long did it take to go to 50 and get to 4K from the first 1K the first time? Uh, about... Uh, it took it took about 60 sessions, so about two months. But I wasn't playing 50 and L the whole time. You know, I was playing 10 and L, and that's the problem with WSOP is that there's no gap. You know, there's no uh, there's no bridge, so there's no 10 and L. So, or there's no 20 and L. So I was just playing 10 and L to get from 100 to 1,000, uh, and then to get the thousand to 10,000, I started playing one table of 50 and L, right? And then I kind of, you know, had like five or six uh, 10 and L's and one 50 and L. And then when I felt better about it and kind of, you know, uh, more comfortable and uh, had a little bit more money, I added a couple of more 50 and L 9 max. And then uh, when I hit 4K, uh, I started playing uh, 6 max 50 and L because there is no 9 max 100 and L. So it just go it they just doesn't run ever. So, but there's plenty of six max hundred and L. So, I figured okay, I'd better sharpen up on the. Uh, I better sharpen up on the uh, six max. So, I started playing that, and uh, now that's fully integrated. So now you're seeing me play all fifty and L, four nine max, two six max. Uh, usually play more, but I've decided to take the volume down a little bit. Uh, just because uh, over the past three weeks or so, I've run pretty bad. Um, in a large scale, it's not that bad. It's only about 20 buy-ins, but that is $1,000. Uh, so, you know, it can fuck with your head some. So I kind of changed the view. So you can see uh, just six tables. Uh, I Occasionally, I'll have a seventh table behind me right here. But typically, no. That's just where the chat is. Uh, so I'm kind of making sure I put extra attention in and... It keeps me. It allows me to lower the volume, and not uh, have to play ten and L. You know what I'm saying? So like, if I dropped all the way down to having like eight hundred or not nah, probably like five hundred in actual money, which would be six hundred dollars more of a loss, then I'd have to be playing ten and L as well. But I figure if I decrease the number of tables, I can play at a slightly lower volume, not put as much at risk at any one time. Because, you know, there are other things that contribute to when you're running bad, not just bad luck. As much as people want to say it's just all bad luck, it's not. Some days you're going to lose more than you're going to win when you run bad. You know, or you're going to lose more than other days when you run bad. Some days when you run bad, you're very suspicious of it and you're like, what's going on here? And it, you're kind of tuned in, you know. And then you just get shown full houses over, you know, your quads get, or your full house getting beat by quads. <laughs> And then you're just like, oh, okay, at least I didn't lose the whole stack. You know what I'm saying? And you come away with a victory. And then other days, you're just like, I have top full. Why am I fucking around with this? I'm just going to jam all the money in. And then the guy rolls quads on you, and you're like, holy shit, whatever. So some days, you're just going to lose more than others. So by decreasing the number of tables that I'm playing, at least for the moment, I can focus on the play a lot more uh, than just you know, using this formulaic method that I have to beat this very small pool of players, which is profitable. But, you know, everybody has confidence issues, so you kind of got to go with what you got, you know. But it, it took me about 60 sessions to go from 1K to 4K. And then, it and then I hit my peak about three weeks ago at 5,400. So that would have been about 80 sessions. Yeah, so I guess it takes about... It takes it takes like fifteen to twenty sessions to gain a thousand playing fifty and L. Uh, on average, you know, there's a lot of losing days in there too. They're not all winners. You know.
So this kind of sucks. When he calls me, um, I don't think he has enough room left here. I'm just going to put him in. I'm not going to guess. He's going to have two pair a lot, but he's also going to have flush draws a lot. Sometimes he's got ace-jack here, and I'm just a dummy. But I, I also think this is kind of, yeah. Sometimes it's a really bad ace, and he just called the flop, right? Because he raised, uh, or he limped, I raised, he called. And then just uh, check-raising the turn was uh, pretty strong. So the way this one went down, he was in the, hang on, I'll get there. Hey, thanks for the follow, by the way. Or what was that? Was it a sub? I didn't see it. Oh. I'll, I'll make this smaller so I can show you guys. So he limped out of first. Uh, I guess I'm just going to keep checking here. Yeah, I just lost to King Queen. Uh, so I went ahead and raised from the small. He defends. Uh, I decide to go ahead and just bet half pot. Turn, we can just check. He bets, we put him in. He's got a weak ass ace. It's kind of the only way to get the money in there effectively and not be beat. Like, because with no raise preflop, he's not going to have ace king. He's most likely not going to have ace jack. He can have some sets, but I don't think it's really a concern. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and check raise this. I didn't three bet preflop, so this could look like just improvement. Do I color code any players? Uh, WSOP doesn't allow you to color code. Uh, there is no color coding. So as you can see, though, there are these little things here. Uh, these little, like, characters, like there's a donkey here. Uh, there's this little purple tag here. I guess that's a color coding, right? There's this little white tag here. These are just my notes, but I will color code the notes. Uh, I don't really tell people uh, what those mean, but, um, you know, that would just be, you know, I'm on stream. I can't really tell you what the color codes mean. When I play on ACR, every player is color coded. Yellow is just, I've played with them in a tournament before because I'm only playing tournaments on ACR. And then, you know, green is go, so, like, those players are weaker and, you know, stuff like that. Red is, you know, stop. These are stronger players, you know, stuff like that. But on here, you can't really color code. WSOP is very, um, it's very basic. This, this software has been this way for a really long time. So, about six years now. But yeah, you can see the, these are the little colors you're looking for. And you, you can infer from that what you like. But thanks for the follow, my man. people here appreciate that I'm kind of just grinding and grinding and grinding up um, up about 40 bucks in the last half hour that's pretty good I guess we can get off this table, right? Wow, I did win with the jacks. That's funny. Okay.
There's also little tags. Like, this doesn't mean I think the player's a bad player necessarily. It's just that there's only so many tags that you can put on somebody. There's only like six tags, so if a player has a tendency to do something, like this player did, like play the weak ace, then he gets the fishbone tag. But it's just kind of at a glance. And I put I put notes on everybody after the stream. I think we just go ahead and bet this one. Clear out the riffraff. Get min raised by try me, which is hilarious because he's usually just doing this to try to get to a flush draw. The ace kind of sucks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Later, can you help me pick up from 5D Cat Eye brand which two or one colors look most like Aurora, Ast Astrals, or Borealis? Ooh. Sure. Send me links. We'll look at them. Wife's the nail expert. She's the one who does them. <laughs> but there's a couple of cat eyes that. Uh, yeah, we have that magnetic one. Haven't used that in a while. I have a magnetic purple one. And a green, I think. Which those are really cool because you can make designs in them with a magnet. These are fun. I think that was like my first set. That was when we did the green. Or the purple. <laughs> this is annoying because some players when they raise they just always have a good hand it's just really annoying Tremi's going to bet full pot if he's checked to 100% of the time here. Hey, look, a full pot bet. He's probably going to do it on the turn. I'd really like a confidence card. That's not bad. He bets smaller. That can always be a king. I think we just check call. Yeah. This, this is his MO. He's going to give me this whole stack the same way. Yeah, it's just a pair. Yeah. He had 6-7, so he had bottom pair and just full pot bet. Which isn't the worst plan in the world, but you kind of want to stop when you realize who you're up against. Like, literally, he'll do this 300 times tonight. If I stay on the table with him long enough, he'll just... You know, it's just an automatic. Which is fine, I guess. I mean, it's going to work. But the thing of it is, it's going to work... Maybe, let's say statistically it's going to work two-thirds of the time, right? Because that's how often I'm going to hit the board with an ace, let's say, right? Like I raise and it's ace-king or he raises and I have ace-queen or whatever and an ace hits the board. About, about one-third of the time that's going to happen, right? So two-thirds of the time he's going to win, but he's only going to win the small amount pre-flop. That full pot bet on the flop, that pays back everything. So it's basically a break-even proposition. And then... If he actually has slices, we're going to end up getting more. So it's really a no-lose situation as long as we don't continue on the turn too loosely. You just kind of got to wait till you make a pair.
Like not continuing after that ace came off on the flush board when I had the pair of sevens. That's kind of really important. Queen's pretty good. Player leads full pot. Huh. I'm going to call. Sometimes he's going to have 3-5. Sometimes he is going to have a draw. I think I'm going to call this one. I think there's some bluffing opportunities. The king might be good sometimes. He's also going to have gut shots and kings here, like king-queen. Can this player have four deuce? Yeah. Yeah, this king's good. Did he actually have a pair? Yeah, he had jacks. Look at that. He played it completely wrong. So this is super interesting. I think sometimes this is the straight or two pair, but I don't think we fold. That three is kind of awesome. So unless he has the straight, we should just win here. So when he checks, I think we just want to go ahead and bet and try to make it look bluffy. So I'm going to go three quarter or two thirds and uh, see what he wants to do. He's going to have a lot of king queen here and queen jack and queen ten. And I think when the board pairs, it's kind of really good for me. It just looks like a busted draw, so you'll get called here even by, like, pocket tens. But at what point should I raise him if I'm trying to protect this ace-queen? Like, there's really no point, right? Unless we just want to play for the whole stack, which I don't think is the move. I think he may have had two pair, uh, but I think it got counterfeited. But he was most likely on the flush draw or a mid-level queen, like queen-jack. And... Uh, I think his read in the end on me is the overpair. So. I'm not playing ace-jack out of first. It's just too many problems here. On on this particular table. Some of them I won't like. But see this short stack here. And, you know, clairvoyant being in the big blind. He kind of was going to 3-bet and play solidly. Uh, like, But by contrast, I'll play it on this table all day. Ooh, come on, deuce. That's not bad. Give me the open ender. One tenth pot bet, eleventh pot bet. Excuse me. So we're gonna call and pray for a deuce. Seven's great, but a deuce would be perfect. Close. Uh, I made three tens. So this is a four-way pot. Uh, I think somebody's got to have a pair. So we're just gonna. Yeah, this player has nothing. I like betting there because he plays every ace, so I don't mind it. I think we just check here. Ace seven, yeah, the ace is never going anywhere. Man, that seven on the river would have been pretty good. But that's probably why I couldn't hit it, is because he had one. Double gutty. Man, missed it. I normally wouldn't bet this this big, but this player only has 30 blinds, so I don't mind him getting it in with a flush draw right here. I'd rather reduce the stack to pot ratio with a set. Did I used to play professionally? Uh, yeah. I guess you could call it that. I never liked calling it playing professionally, but it paid the bills, which is the goal that we're on to now, to cover the bills again. You know, The Rona was a bitch, so... Uh, <laughs> It kind of changed everything. But, uh, yeah. Um, those videos don't exist anymore. I took them all off. Uh, but years ago, uh, I played, uh, you know, tournaments and cash, just like now. And uh, went to Canada to play on Poker Stars for a while. And streamed really good. And then, and I was really uh, doing well with the streaming. And I kind of... You know, if I could do anything, I would go back and not quit. But I stopped because it was really frustrating uh, with things that were going on in life that kept me from, you know, being able to hang on to my bankroll. Like, we had disasters and family shit and whatever. So I didn't really want to play in front of everybody. So I, I got kind of annoyed. And plus everybody was saying, you know... I don't really know how to handle it when people would say certain shit. Uh, so I just quit, and I took a, f a short 1486-day break. 
and then I came back to streaming in September uh, with just the idea of rebuilding. And it's going pretty well. You know, I never stopped studying. Uh, I just had to stop playing for a while. But I think I progressed along with the game. And, you know, this is a local room, so... Uh, I'm playing against mostly the same players. Like, I see 90% of these players every day. So it just takes a while to, to learn. But yeah. I had sponsors. I had the whole thing. I was the original ACR Stormer. I was actually the first guy who was an ACR Stormer back in the day. Back then, they just paid us in tournament entries. But I always got the big ones. That's how long ago it was. This is before the Venom existed. And the Venom's been around almost five years now. But yeah, eventually I, I left that too. <laughs> now they just sponsor pros. I was also very frustrated because at the time, uh, there were no affiliate rewards, right? So this is back when it was like you were either a sponsor, a, uh, what is it, a partnered streamer or nothing. They didn't have the affiliate program. So I was actually in Canada playing on a final table and I had something like 3,000 people watching me and every third question was, you know, where's the sub button? Where's the sub button? I want a sub. And I would have to just say, sorry, I'm not uh, partnered. And back then, there was a guy named Scott Ball. He's still in the poker world, but not with Twitch anymore. He was the Twitch poker guy. And basically, he was the guy who had the magic wand. He just had to look at you because he represented poker on Twitch. And he would just say, yeah, give this guy a sub button. So I was on that final table, and somebody said, look at this. Here's a friend of Scott's. And they showed me, and the guy had made his Twitch account the day before and was already partnered. He had like 50, 50 followers. Because it was just all friends of his and shit. I had like 4,000 followers and like 3,000 people watching me. So I got really pissed off. And I just said, fuck it. And then I, you know, after I stopped streaming, all that put together made me stop streaming. Apparently, like, three months later, the affiliate program came out. But I was so bitter about the whole thing. I didn't even watch Twitch anymore. Like, I totally, like, just abandoned it. And uh, I got the affiliate thing before about three months uh after I quit and uh, I actually had subs when I came back to to the channel and I changed the name and all like that I actually had subs from back then I think we check here So you'll see my name on here is still Flippa, because you can't change your your name, so Flip A A A A. But you'll see the channel name is now Qui Gon Broke. This is kind of weird. I think I can actually take a poke at this. There's a lot of stuff in the commands that'll tell you about about me that you can learn about. Oh. get to follow the YouTube and all the TikTok and all that kind of shit. I put out unique content on all of them. I have so much footage backed up. This is 
think I have to call at this price. There's a lot of draws here, so I might get bet against. So I think that's why we have to bet bigger if we had ace-king. I think that would be the move. If you want to see a really interesting video that still lives out there, it's on Jamie's channel. You can actually search on YouTube. Flippa, Flip A-A-A-A -A 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 versus uh, Jamie Staples. We played heads up when I was in Canada. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but I did well. Okay, we got the links here. Let's take a look. Oh, I think the DG is the one I have. Or the, the one that we have. This one? So, I like this one. I know that. And let's look at the other one. The other one's pretty good. It looks like uh, it looks like smaller glitter. This is kind of weird when he checks and I lead the turn. I think we lead River. Sometimes he's afraid of the flush. Sometimes he has the flush. But I just don't want to get beat by like a 10 here that kind of like is playing it cautious. Yeah, I think that's good. Good double barrel. Um, I think... Whoops. Wrong one. Oh, I opened it on the wrong thing. Hang on. Uh, I'm trying to decide. This is kind of weird. Why would this player just call? 8-5, uh, I guess. 8-9, I guess. I don't know. Uh, I kind of want to see it. Right? Four deuce, just the gut shot, and then he went for the bluff on the river. That didn't make sense. So, a nice little pick off there. Uh, I think... I think this is more like the one that I have. And I love it in the purple. But I think for what you're looking for, I think this one. The DND. Babe, which is the, the magnetic shit we have? What's that brand? Is it the DND one? No, some random Seven Star. Seven Star, that's the one. I like this DND one, though. Yeah, there's lots of them now. When we bought it, it wasn't really. That's true. That was a while. How long ago was that? That was like my first set. Two years. That was two years ago? No, it was 2020. Oh, that's right. You weren't even out of school yet. It just started. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that was. It was like a brand new thing. <clears throat> I didn't mean to slow roll this guy. I wasn't watching. So now we get bet at huge with a set uh, on this flushy board. The board pairs, I think we just check now. Uh, did you really? You didn't have the flush. He didn't have the flush. No, he had pocket eights. Yeah, he was. He, I wasn't gonna get any more out of him. But yeah, I like the D and D man. Glad I came back. Yeah, me too. I actually enjoy it now. Uh, as as frustrating as poker can be, I actually enjoy streaming. And I've I've since coming out, I've uh, it's a whole new layer too because uh, I've gotten to know. Well, I've gotten to chit chat with and, you know, kind of uh, learn about other creators like the Stream Queens. Like, those are my favorite. All of them Spooky Snowflake, Deer, um, Gothica Love, you know, all those. Like, when I raid out, I don't raid out into poker streamers because uh, it's kind of hard for me to watch poker streamers. <laughs> but I like watching the Drag Queens, so. Uh, I always raid into them, and uh, I think they're unbelievably uh, entertaining and really great people. And I've had some really great conversations, like in discords and and all like that, with them, and they're really lovely. So this player bet the full. 
Huh? You sound like Jeff Goldblum. Well, we, we just watched Jeff Goldblum on Hot Ones, so it's kind of hard not to sound like him. Look at this. I ran out quad tens. This guy's going to have an ace a lot, too. If he doesn't have an ace, I'm not going to get any more money out of him. He bets two bucks. I'm just going to jam because he's not going to fold an ace. All right, we just jam. Yeah, he's not going to fold an ace there. Nobody is. So he, he, just, he had like a pair of jacks, so I probably should have just raised the turn but or raised the flop. But, I mean, I just had it nutted. I think he was actually full on bluffing. Yeah, I like the D&D. &D. Yeah. That's that's my vote. Yeah, but we we watched Jeff Goldblum on Hot Ones yesterday. And uh, apparently they did it back in 2018, but he's so fun to watch talk. He's like, it's very uh, effervescent, and it's just uh, precocious without being, uh, you know, pretentious. And, it's, and he's, <laughs> he's hilarious. It's fascinating to listen to. Snap calls me. I'm going to check turn. He can have ace-jack. He can have ace-ten sometimes. Uh, we're going to bet half pot and just get the value. I probably could have kept betting through the turn. Wow! He backed off with a set C. That's strong, that strong cycle right there. I bet super huge on the flop. He just called with a set of fours and then didn't raise me when I bet half pot on the river. That's funny. That was a set of fours. And the fucking guy got $8 out of me. What a loser. I'm surprised we got two folds that quickly. Wow, I got through all three of them on that bet. I mean, it's a super dry flop, but I wasn't really expecting to get through. Just full buy-ins with pocket eights? What the fuck happened here? Oh, no problem, Wabbit. Look at this, he rivers the eight. What the fuck? Blind versus blind, but come on. Been on for about an hour. We're up two buy-ins. It's not bad. But these other tables are still glitched. I can't... I can't get on them. 
gonna let this go. Oh sure, now you're gonna let me on the fucking table when I can't fucking oh, I guess I can and I'll just play it off stream. And if anything happens cool, I'll I'll put it up on this screen for you, screen for you guys. So, you might see the edge of this one come in. I'm going to lead the 10. Uh, I think I want to lead this draw here. Get called. Uh, we're going to lead the river. He's going to have an ace sometimes, but it's hard to call when I bet twice and the flush draw comes off. So I should really only get raised here, unless he has two pair. Two pair can call me. But he'd have to have, like, exactly ace-8 or ace-jack. Yeah, right? Like, this doesn't... He can't call that when we bet twice. And then we see an ace and we just, like, give no fucks and just bet anyway. Yeah, that's a, that's a great bluff spot. All right, so we got a lot of tables going here. I like the double and ditch method, if, if you didn't know, uh, Waskily. I like to, you know, get to 100 on a table and then get off of it and just rat hole it. It's kind of what you need to do when you're playing with the same players all the time, like... Just because you end up, like, I'm trying to play 100 big blind poker. I'm not trying to play 200 big blind poker. So if there's an effective stack on the table that's comparable when I've already doubled up, it's like, what's the point? Might as well just get off, not take the risk. Oh, but you can win twice as much. Yeah, you can lose twice as much, too. Like, I've had that happen, and then, like, you just get aces and get it in versus kings for the 200 big blinds and lose. And it's just like, yeah, you got it in with aces versus kings, and that's great, but you still lost the money. Got 3-bet here. This player does 3-bet kind of wide, so I actually kind of don't doubt that this is, like, a good hand. Like, I don't think this is just an ace bluffing. I really don't. You play Omaha, sets mean death to me. Exactly. Yeah, Omaha sets are, like, uh, middling flushes in, in Hold'em. <laughs> actually, it's worse than that. It's like, it's like top pair in uh, Omaha is having a set. We might win this one. I sympathize with scared of set of fours, even though it's Hold'em. But yeah, but here's the thing, though. Like, I was the original opener. Like, the only thing he should really be afraid of is if I have uh, a set of aces on that flop, right? I, I'm just so much more often going to have an ace. Ace, king, ace, queen. Like, I don't understand why he didn't... When I check the turn, he should absolutely be betting. Like, because I'm never going to check a set of aces... I'm just going to keep betting because he obviously has something to continue. It's like here, if you had sixes, are you afraid of me having a set of tens? It's like you really shouldn't be. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these look like kill pots, but you'd be surprised how often you get called there by king, queen, king, jack. And there's just no reason to bet smaller. I'm kind of... I think for right now, like, this, the room kind of goes in waves. Like, about three weeks ago, it was working really well to just... Bet, bet GTO standard, like bet small on the flop, bigger on the turn, bigger on the river, and I was just triple barreling everything and just winning a ton. Then it stopped working. Maybe people are adjusting to me specifically, but it just stopped working. So I kind of changed it up and I decided just to start betting big value uh, whenever I hit something, and that seems to be working much better. Range is a smart guy, but he does open way too many hands, so I really don't have a problem with 3-betting him at any point. I don't need ace queen off to three bet there. Wow, one of these tables. Jesus. Well, I can't get on it because I don't have any space, but one of these tables is averaging 40 big blind pots. Usually you see the max around 25 on an average. You see like the 25 average pot. But this one's been, yeah, and that table's been going a long time. 40 big blind pots and they're averaging 83 hands an hour. Yeah, it's been there a while. And there's, oh wow, I see what it's going. One guy has three buy-ins. A couple other guys have something. And then like five players have dead stacks. They have uh, just straight buy-in stacks, so... It's been very coolery on that table, I guess. Still, I like the action. Let's 
not bad. Um, looking at something off stream, I'll bring it over if it turns into something. I think it just turned into something. <laughs> I might have gotten rivered because I called the flop and then I raised the turn and then he called me and then the six came off on the river and he fucking called this huge river bet too. That's really bad. I mean, I know this player is a fucking donkey ass, but look at this. He bets this pot for full pot. I call the turn comes off. He bets half pot and I raise him monstrously and he calls it anyway. And then the river, I bet half pot and he just fucking calls it after I get counterfeited. That's so bad. Like, I don't know why you're calling the turn. It's super bad, bro. I bet I, I, bet I could have jammed the whole stack in and he would have been like, Bullshit! And just called it off. On the turn. That's that thing where I say, like, when people immediately improve. Like, when he hits the ace there, I know he's never folding, so I just went super big on the bet. But I'm just going to have a set there a ton. I mean, I am going to have two pairs sometimes, but... I mean, I called him, and it was the top card on the flop that tripped out. I could easily have a set of sixes. I could easily have a six, five, six. I could have just filled the whole fucking thing up. I just happen to have the one combination of, that makes two pair that can raise like that that he can beat when the six comes off. So, kind of a bit, very much so a bad beat. Like, I knew he was full of shit, and that was out of first. He was raising that out of first. So, he's running good. He reopened up ace-10 out of first, c-bet it huge, got called, and then called a big old check raise on the turn. Yeah, he's being a real donkey. He's just leading at everything. Yeah, he's feeling good. This guy just called me when I raised out of first. He just called. The back jam's a good play with the uh, with the queens there. What's up, Afro Joe? How you doing, man? It's going pretty good. A little bit of a bad turn uh, earlier, but it's going better now. Flop the draw. I must be getting some hype somewhere because uh, I'm gonna check this one. This is kind of like flopping a flush draw. I think I I, I don't think I want to get blown off my equity, and I think if I bet, I'm gonna get raised by pairs and sets. Fang betting is kind of whatever. Six. Seven's not the worst. It's not the best, but it's definitely not the worst. I'm get three bet here check here. This player is most likely to have jack-8, so it kind of depends on what Feng does. Priest, Joe. Yeah, there's the jack-8 right there. This is kind of weird. I think we want to take one card off. Uh, I'm going to bet the turn and river. Yeah.
Damn, lots of people here. How am I getting the hype? And some new players here. Or new uh, new people here. So, appreciate that, guys. That's the link tree that'll take you to all the socials. The TikTok, the Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. And, uh... Please follow all those. The YouTube's the biggest one because I put up all the uh, streams on YouTube and I make custom content that's more long form on YouTube. But there's also a bunch of TikToks and Instagram stuff and fun shit like that. I, I have so much fucking footage. I've just been playing so much that I don't have the energy to, to really edit it down. But I've got like three months worth of footage, probably like 15 or 20 good clips I can make into TikToks. He opens, I 3-bet. I think we'll just go ahead and bet. Take it down. Like I said, this player opens super wide. I mean, if a lot of people I played against actually knew about my stream, they would probably do better against me, but... Um, I think we want to go ahead and 3-bet here. Uh, I'm going to check to Braveton here. Because I think we have just enough showdown to check. I'm just going to keep checking here. I think this is fine. Yeah. I'm trying to get bluffed here. It's the only reason why I didn't bet again. He checked min raised me, and it's like he never has anything. He has ace queen. All he did was just stall me, get to showdown. But I'm never supposed to three bet there. I could have bet the river for sure. I probably should have bet the river. That's probably really bad that I didn't. Not really bad, but definitely bad. Gonna head out, do some studying PLO ranges. Good night. Hope everything gets better. Take care. Oh, everything's great, man. Thanks. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming out. Make sure you follow all the stuff and uh, stay on it. But we'll see you. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right, you can have it. Getting squeezed. Uh, kind of weird. I don't really know what's going on here. I'm going to check. Yeah, he had a five. All right, that's cool. I don't know if I'm getting him off that, but I should, but whatever. I should try, but I kind of lost track of the hand. Yeah, so this is why I didn't call it. There's just too much going on there. Should I get off this table? I mean, it's it's kind of heavy. I think I want to. I think I want to ditch it. Yeah, there's a lot of six max. Are there any good ones? Uh, there's not too many good ones. Uh. Yeah, I think I'm going to get off that table. Asperasis Crunzizeresi. What the fuck was it called? But, I'm going to see. There's a lot of 6 max I can get on. Look at this. Fang's raising out of first. I would call this a ton, but I think with him raising out of first, I don't think we can discount 
him re-raising pre. So I would love to flop that. Ugh, he just folds. All right, at least I didn't have to see a five on the flop. Interesting situation going on under the table. The same piece of shit son of a bitch just gut shot at me. And I know he did too. He doesn't do this without the nuts. It's so brutal. Uh, I flopped one that was great for my range but bad for my actual hand, so I started bluffing. And the guy just fucking got there on me. Ugh, that's annoying. God damn it. What the hell is this? Shocker. Way to go. Just annoying. Uh, where's that table I wanted to look at? Mm, whoa, that's a deep stack table. Jesus. Yeah, I don't like that. About this one. Coming in all these tables with all these guys with 300 big blinds, it's like, what the fuck? Getting so many chances, that's a good table. Getting so many chances to flop something and I just can't hit it. Ugh. Like there was a small raise I called and a re-raise, and then this happened. And then this guy made a big re-raise, this guy called, so this is a pair of fours right here, right? Ace-King and, and Queens, like it's just unbelievable. The Ace-King calling pre-flop and then calling off there, like you're never good. Like what does he ever have? Do you think he's like actually bluffing Kings? Like Braverton obviously has something, but it's not Ace-King, that's for sure. I didn't mean to call this one, it was a misclick. I should have been raising. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, if I had flopped a three, though, I'd have gotten the triple. The full on tripski. Fold here. Check. Look at this. Two pair. don't like the diamond coming off because the diamond draw shouldn't bet the flop <sighs> nobody has anything I feel like I haven't flopped a set in a month <laughs> I 
I guess we just bet and fold to a raise. Queen seven, okay, seven of hearts. Why would I bluff it? It's like that's the thing. That's one of those ones that doesn't make sense. Like that's a bad player. Like there's nothing in the pot, and I bet super small. But it's like why would I even bet it? Like you're 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 just bluff catching with like a shitty flush. Like why would I bet it? Like if I had the eight of hearts, I wouldn't bet it. This is annoying. <coughs> It's only because of the player behind it, really. I couldn't do much here. Not that I don't think he can have the flush. I just think it's kind of awkward that he that he even got there. Small open. I'm going to call. I was going to re-raise, but you know what? I'm not going to 4-bet it because we're really just trying to hit sets to get all the money in. Like, I'm not getting the money in with an overpair here, right? Well, oh. place that jack with a 10. It's just so perfect. Ace on the flop, the flush draw. There's, there's nothing we can do here. Even if I 3-bet it, I don't think there's a path to winning there. bit of down swinging, a little bit of down swinging. Still up a bit for this session, down for the day. that lined up? Yeah, kind of. Foldy, foldy. Get a walk with Ace King. Yeah. Ooh, set of fours. In position. I guess we just check. God damn it with the spades. I guess we just bet, right? Wish I'd re I really wish I bet the flop because that would induce more bluffs. Like he never has spades there, but if I bet in the flop and he just floats me and then I check turn and then he bets river, we're gonna get much more value out of him. Because
Oh, God damn it, I misclicked on a different table. He can definitely have king queen. He can definitely have ace queen. He can definitely have ten jack. I didn't bet it because I felt like he had, might have had like king nine or king queen. King jack. Thanks for letting me get there and paying off. Preach. Guess we just fold that. I could defend, but I really don't like defending the weak ass king. Just because it's like when the king hits, we just get scumped so bad because you can't fold when you flop a king, but then you just have to make a judgment call. That's pretty nice. Just gonna call, always have to fade these flush cards, man. There's been so many of them. I mean, this is kinda weird. Yeah, he's just got tens. This is annoying because it's so likely that he has ace king with the with the ace or king of spades. So I can't even call. And I know the player, he's he's too solid to do anything stupid. Like he he was barreling and then he got there. Like his river bet's just way too small to If he was bluffing, he would have gone way bigger or way smaller, but he was like straight up value betting. So I get called. I'm just gonna keep betting here. King of the turn over here is not bad. We can go value. Really? <sighs> okay. Wow. Oh come on, hold. Hold. The fuck was that? I don't know what's going on here. Wow, really, King Eight? Like that's what I'm talking about. That's why you don't defend the weak ass King. Like, I bet flop and turn, check to him, and then he bet on the river for me for value. That's hilarious. This guy just fucking fully jammed 50 bucks over my raise, and it's like, okay, how often is he going to show me aces? But he's king-queen? That's hilarious. I guess we'll just check this one, make the straight. And that turn. Check, check, check. I mean, I guess we just bet again, right, for value? That was easy. How quickly the turn tables. <laughs> I'm at a new high for the night. That was just, I don't know what the fuck this was. Like, he just, for, for the full 50. And it was like it was like his third hand. That's hilarious. I guess he just he just wanted to just punt it. I don't know. I mean, I'll take it. Thank you. And I guess we're done with this table. And we'll get on another six max. Oh, check. I already thought I checked that. We get on another six max here. See raise from Dane. I think I want to just call here. Get him to be over aggro when we hit the king. Guess we just call. Bet the turn pretty big to kind of look like bullshit. He's going to have a 9 sometimes and I'm going to be fucking myself, but he's not going to fold preflop like 10, 9, 9 jack, queen jack. We're going to bet half pot here. If I get raised, I'm fucked. This is one of those ones where you just know that you have to, like, that fold. Especially when he takes this long. I think he's just thinking about it. Like, I don't think he's got me beat. Is he, like, really doing this with, like, a 9 or Queen Jack? I really don't think so. Unless he's debating a raise with, like, King Queen, but it's kind of not proper to do. This is kind of interesting. I'm going to call this guy. Bet's big. Braveton, three bets. Really big. Fang. This is on the other table. I'm going to pull this over here. So, wow, I just get cold called by the fucking monster here. So, Fang opens, Braveton three bets way too wide. <coughs> I, 
I, I, I four bet. I guess we'll just check here. That's nice. Uh, I'm gonna keep checking here. Like nobody should have anything except this motherfucker. He just cold called my fucking four bet pre flop. Like he could have gotten it all. He cost himself thirty five here. Oh, maybe not. Look at this. This is fucking stupid. Aces. How good am I? No C bet. Jacks. Wow. How good am I? <laughs> Four bet and lose. Not another cent post flop with the Ace King. <laughs> That's pretty nice. Can I get on this other table? Oh, that's a bad seat, man. Oh, plus the table should... No, fuck that. Here's a good one. Can I get on here? Yeah. That's pretty good. I guess we're getting off this one, getting on another 9 max. Yeah, it's going to look weird for a minute, but I'm going to replace this table with this table. So, I'm actually playing eight tables total. You guys can only see six of them. pretty good today. Usually all the action's on the 6 max, but we're getting there. I don't love it, but I don't think we can fold the ace-jack suited.
This player bets half pot. So he's only been here for seven minutes. Uh, the problem is Fang behind. Because if he has a full house, that sucks. I'm just going to rip it. Uh, I just, I, I mean, I know he's got a pair, but we'll see. Yeah, we have nine outs. Should have nine or 12. Uh, like if he has jacks, kings, queens, he's going to play it the same way. I just hate when the player just gets there and they just sit down to fucking aces that fucking sit that fucking sit up straight. And Feng calling behind is kind of fucking stupid, so I have to rejam. So it's so whatever. I think it's fine. Sitting there for seven fucking minutes just gets aces and just perfect scenario. So range is taking a long time. We might play a huge fucking pot here. I'm just gonna make it as big as possible. Yeah. He's either gonna keep going or he's he's either gonna check raise me or he's just gonna fold immediately. Okay, here we go. We're off that table. Okay. First hand on this table. Check, 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 fold. Ooh, got a three. You win, bro. Just breathe on the pot. It's yours. I win with a three? What do you have? Nine, eight? Nine, six, four. Okay. Sure. This is kind of annoying. I'm just going to let it go, though. I don't want to guess. I don't mind this defense. Uh, see the four and then, like, nothing? Yeah, you can have it. It's fine. <clears throat> I'm really just looking for equities there. Three deuce. Alright. There's a player I haven't seen in a while. Don't think we can fold yet. Queen's pretty good. He's going to bet again. If he has a queen, he'll go broke. It also looks so ridiculous. Sometimes he has aces here, but a lot of times he's going to have king-queen, ace-queen, and he's just not going to be able to get rid of it, be able to get rid of it. And I did it so fucking quick, it just looks ridiculous. just want to charge the max versus draws, like the ace-ten, ace-king of diamonds, those kind of hands. I don't know if you're supposed to fold the ace-king. The ace-king diamonds here is kind of like, I'm charging him a shitload, though. Like, you might as well just get the money in if you're going to call there. Yeah, so that's fine. I don't know how often he has a pair there, so I think I like the bet. If he doesn't have a pair and he's betting that strong, you got to imagine he's got outs. So, it seems like an action kill, but I just got to this table. This player doesn't know me that well. He's fairly new to the site. You know, we're seeing a lot of passive action, stuff like that, so I think it's good to do shit like that. Like, maybe I get it all if I check-raise the flop, but uh, I don't think so, because I think he should just have more suited aces. So... When the queen hits a turn, though, it's hard for him to... With ace-queen, people, like, usually can't fold if they improved. So he may have had ace-jack. Maybe I sucked out. Or maybe he had, like, pocket tens or something. But I think the move there was the big check raise. Especially super fast. Like, I'm trying to figure out, like, what hands he would have to think about it with. I think he'd only have to think about it with, like, the flush draw. But with one card to come, he really shouldn't call. So it's a good fold if he had a flush draw. Even the suited ace-king, which is 12 outs to the nuts. Uh, unless I have a set, right? Uh, actually, it's 11 outs because if the, the... Well, I have the queen of, queen of diamonds. But I could have like a set of sevens or sixes, so he loses outs there. Still. So I get 3-bet on his side table when I opened uh, Queens. I got 3-bet in the big blind. Just me and him heads up and the king flops. All right. He leads at it. It's fine. He can have it. Queens good over here. 
This is a small open pot, so there shouldn't be much. This is kind of weird. He can definitely have a queen, but he could also be repping a queen. The only real queen he can have is king queen. I'm going to check this one back. I'm going to fold here. When he's called twice, I don't know if you like a queen. I don't like a queen for value, even ace queen here. Uh, this is kind of... It's been sitting for 10 minutes. This looks so bluffy to me, but the player behind I can't call. The player behind can have two pairs a lot. Like This is kind of annoying too. Like he's only been here ten minutes. If he had been here for like an hour, I would probably call this, but I don't think he's I, I think he's got two pair. Which means I do have eleven outs against him, but or ten outs against him, but still that's only twenty percent, so I could have controlled the size of the pot, bet half pot, or bet a quarter pot or something like that. But I think he's just I think he's trying to like get the money in way too easy. So Queens in the Smiznal. I'll just call this one. I could definitely 3-bet, but I think calling is fine sometimes. 60% like of the time. It's not bad. So, if he's got a value hand, we should be okay. Now we're really good. And it looks like I just have a flush draw. I'm going to check raise him. I don't know what he can have, but a king queen is definitely possible. Ace king is definitely possible. Ten jack is actually possible, so I'm just going to take my time and then bet less than his stack all in. This looks like I want him to fold, so when he jams, I can actually fold for a dollar and not show the bluff. What would you have? He flopped the Fliznesh. No value hand when the board pairs is going to be good on that board. From his perspective. But he shouldn't have opened in the first place. The five deuce. I mean, he was just he could have just been drawing dead on the flop, right? I mean, I'm going to have the ace uh, or the king-queen with the king of diamonds a lot. Or king of hearts a lot. But still... Flop two pair, bottom and top, on this other table. Uh, I'm just going to lead it. It's 9-4 deuce in a limped pot. I have 9 deuce in the big blind. So. Hey. Eight tables? Yeah, eight. Opens for five blinds. I want to call it, but I'm going to be smart. Like, a lot of players play their hands face up. Like, it should just be a good hand. Mm. It's getting called, though. This is like an ace queen he wants to show down. So, yeah, Feng should just raise all turns here because he's not going to fold. Look at the, look at the min bet. That's hilarious. Do you think he can fold? Of course he can fold now.
So this player raises, I re-raise, uh, he four bets. In position, I'm just going to call. Not folding now. Sucks when he has queens, but uh, he may just go banana crackers. I mean, if he has aces or kings, it's whatever. I mean, I think we just take our time, right? Like, there's no point in raising here. Hopefully, oh god, if he has queens now, I'm going to puke. Aces, look at that. Aces versus ace king. I flopped top two pair. Oh, that's so gross. And I know he's so basic, that's the other reason why I called it. Look at this guy paying me off with a one liner straight. Fuck, did you have queen eight? Okay, sure. That's kind of gross. Ugh. That's, that's frustrating. I was going to just jam it pre-flop, but it's like in position, I might as well take the flop. And the queen on the turn could have saved me, right? But when he just rips it, he never has the he never has queens. I like his bet on the flop, but... I mean, what am I supposed to do? Be able to read the single hand that beats me? Ooh, I got a set on the other table. Yeah. Look at this. There's a lot of players in this, and I flopped the, uh, the set, but now there's three hearts out there. I guess we just check. This fucking shit. God. I was going to bet the river, too. I well, flopped a set over here. That's so bad. Like, there's just no point. Like, you just can't bluff some players. That's crazy that he called me. And there was three players behind him there, and he still called. With the one-liner seven of hearts flush and a pair. Well, flopped another set. frustrating right there so limp limp pot call call I guess I call well, that's pretty good we might have to play a big one again because again if he has jacks we have 12 outs twice so he bets four if Feng folds I think I am going to raise That call is kind of bewildering because this player should have more sets than anything. So I'm just going to call. I cost myself action when the spade comes here, but I feel like this is more likely fours and fives. So I kind of want to give myself a chance. Problem is he can actually actually have uh, over cards or over pairs here. He can even have pocket jacks or tens, right? He can have, definitely have tens the way it's played. I think if you have tens, you want to go for the big bet here. Board pairs. So the only hand this guy can have is pocket fours, right? Any bets? We're just going to call. I think it's 50-50 if he's going to show me a full house. Okay. That's why you don't play those, bro. I mean, I can't raise, right? I wish I had check raise the flop now, but I don't know what the other player has. It's kind of weird. It's kind of... I gotta make notes on that one for later. So $4 open. This player's been here for 20 minutes. I'm just gonna fold. Get called by Fang. This player limped.
I guess we just bet. I mean, I'm betting into two players, so. Takes forever and then calls. Uh, we're going to bet. He's going to have eights sometimes. He's going to have more flush draws than eights. Yeah. So we just have to bet again. Um... I'm just going to call this one. Out of position. Ooh, look at that. He's never going to see me having queens. Problem is he might see me having king-queen. I guess we just call. I'm going to look like I have 10 jack. Uh, there's the 9. I mean, I don't know if I'm getting any more out of ace-king here. King-8? No, I'm not getting any more out of king-8. I would have had to... Well, it would have worked out because I would have raised preflop and then I would have 3-bet preflop. He would have called... And then on that flop, I'm probably going to check. And then he's going to check. And I'm going to bet small on the turn. He's probably going to raise. I'm going to check. He's going to bet. So I guess the pot works out to be almost the same. Maybe I make an extra 10 blinds. Like an extra 5 bucks. But not likely. Uh, nah. Uh, okay. No. I think we want to raise. I mean, this player posted in first, and he's only got 20 bucks, so it's whatever. Fold, fold, fold. No diamonds. We can have it. There's one diamond, but I'm not going to call for backdoor. Like, I don't have anything going on there, really. Dun, 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 dun. Ten's nice. Player leads the full pot. I don't love it, but I'm not going to fold yet. Six is bad. He checks. We're going to bet half pot on the turn. He calls. That four sucks. I'm going to check. Yeah. Because I can't... It takes away my set combos. So I really can't bet the river because he's going to have some fours. And I'm not going to have any, so... The 10 was nice, but... I, I just I just don't think it's, it's... I don't think it's a spot I can value bet the river. I mean, I know he didn't have anything to call me there. But I don't think I can value bet that river after... Calling the flop, leading the you know, and then he check calls the turn, like with just pure overs. It's just hilarious. Jack would have been fucking amazing. Uh, let's just call this one. Could definitely three bet. This guy's gonna three bet again. He was like done with that way too much. Fremont's coming out of first, so I don't know. I don't know if you want a three bet ace queen here. All right, we're heads up. King's pretty good. Just going to bet straight value. 
There is a world in which this player has a six. Because you don't bet it on the flop, but it's whatever. Maybe I should have been half pot there. But traffic's so volatile, it's like... All right, we got waiting lists here. We'll fold here. We'll rabbit hole that table. And I'll bring over one of these. Check it. This is a nice one. Yeah. He had 10 9. He bet the flop and turn. Or he bet the, he checked the flop, bet the turn. And then I bombed the river when the 7 came off. It's pretty awesome. And player just always fucking hero calls. I think we're going to raise here. I think this looks stronger. This player doesn't have a jack very often. And I think we're gonna check. We're gonna check the river here. Pocket tens. Yeah, it was close. It was very close. If I had check raised the flop, which I was gonna do a certain percentage, um, but with the player behind, I really can't do that. His lead out's good though. Like I've, I've been noticing a lot of players figuring out ways to to lead out and get showdowns on hands where they really shouldn't. Looks like some of these tables are dying. What time is it? 10 o'clock? Uh, what do I think is more profitable? Hang on. Uh, WSOP 50NL 6 max or 50NL 9 max? Um, I think it's close. I think playing both of them is important because it's weird, but like certain days of the week are, and it's, it's never the same week to week. Here's the thing, like certain days of the week, it's just kind of what happens, like things affect it. And when you're dealing with such a small player pool, something like the weather can affect how people play. Like I, I notice every time it gets rainy, and this is a true fact from, you know, years ago when I was playing live professionally. Uh, well, to make a living, I don't, I don't know if I'd call it professional. Uh, when it was rainy out, like, players were the tightest ever. Like, I don't, I don't know what that is. Maybe it's just something in the way the human mind feels less, you know, feels more uneasy when it's raining or something like that. It never affected me. I mean, I grew up in South Florida, so rain is like the way of life. But, um, I don't want to 3-bet this one. I think this is better called because it's suited. If it was off-suit, I would 3-bet. Yeah. Um, so, like, there's definitely things that affect the manner in which people play on certain days of the week. And it's not like you can say, oh, well, Mondays are this and Tuesdays are that. But it just kind of depends on what's going on in that town on that day, you know, what time of year, weather, like all these little things. And it's good to play both 50 and L, 6 max, and 9 max because. The 6 max will play tight one day and loose the next, and the same for the 9 max, so it's kind of... So this player limp calls and then leads. I think we just call here, and maybe we set up a bluff. I think we check the turn. Uh, we definitely don't call any bets on this river, because if he has a rag queen, this is exactly how he plays it. He just leads the river. Yeah, you got it, bro. Uh, I definitely think there was a bluff possibility there if the board didn't pair off twice. Get off this table. I'm gonna call this one. We'll fold that one. Uh, I check this. I'll 
bring this one over. Uh, I can win here sometimes with the ace high up top. I mean, Feng doesn't seem that interested. I'm just going to call these tens. I'm going to bet the king. I think we win a lot here. If he checks. Yeah. There's, there was never like a good spot for him to bet. Look at this. Raise, call, call. Jam, call. Aces and queens. Queens flop is set. The aces has the heart draw. Hearts. No, no. Hearts no good. Full house. I think we just want to go ahead and bet the ace. I'll just take it. But like how many times have I had like bigger, like had pairs in spots where I should be four betting, but I'm like, nah, I don't feel like four betting this right now for some reason. And then it's just like two guys with much bigger pairs come out. So limp, raise, call. Uh, I'm going to three bet this one. See, this is a much better scenario. Now, this player can be trapping sometimes, but when he folds, we usually get the fold through. Yeah, that's a good steal. I mean, it's kind of obvious, but it's not obvious if you don't look for those spots. Like, once you see those enough times, you're just like, oh, okay. It's kind of like raising here. I'll let this go. So this guy limp calls. Ace on the flop. This is a fun one. So we're going to just check back. Make two pair. And I think we're going to bet big here. He's not going to have much often. But we're not getting any action on the flop. Sometimes he has a set and I'm just going to pound the fucking money into his face. But I think when we check flop... It's like if we bet flop, he just snap folds everything, right? But when we check flop, if he has like a pair of sevens, he may continue when we bet the turn pretty big. Get three bet. Okay. Look at this. He's just, he doesn't want to get fucking beat again. <laughs> That's one where I would say he has queens plus. So this player leads at me, which is kind of annoying. I think I have the only spade, but I'm not going to call on a hunch. King Queen super possible, Ace King not as possible. So we have to kind of be careful, even though we have aces. Like I'd love to see him call and then an eight on the turn, and then get to check raise him. I flop the nuts on another table. I flop the nut flush on the button. I guess we just bet half pot, right? Try to build this pot. There's a player here. He folds. This player here was the original raiser. He has ace-king a ton here, so he may not fold. I just like betting there. I, I really don't like checking because I, 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 don't think you, I don't think you accomplish anything most times by checking. Because if somebody has two pair or a set, they're just going to fucking pound it anyway. So I've seen guys go check-raise there all in with aces. And I have the nut flush and they have no way to win. So I, I, like, I like betting. I think fast play is, is definitely the new slow play. Yeah, so I think it evens out as far as the profitable question goes. I mean, I think my first go-to is to play 9-max, because that's an interesting way to do it. So, like, if I had 8 9-max tables I could be on right now, I would rather that, because it takes less focus to play 9-max than 6-max, right? Because you you have to play tighter, so you're playing less hands. So it allows me to get an overall volume of better hands, so this player opens 
pretty huge out of first and I'm in the small blind, this is kind of ideal with aces over here, especially since I feel like he's super tilty. We see a call. Uh, I'm going to re-raise, go right to 11 bucks. This is actually a little small. The raise should be closer to 14 or 15. But we're kind of just trying to get this guy to go banana crackers with kings and queens. So he calls me, so he's going to have ace king a ton. Uh, I don't know what nice hand's doing here. Hopefully he back jams. Queens, the queen kind of sucks a little bit, but I think we just bet small. We do have the ace of hearts in my hand. If he jams here and has queens, it's just too fucking bad. All right, whatever, bro. You want it in? We'll get it in. Yeah, he has queens. Fucking shit. Love that. Set mining with queens. This, is, this has been the story of my day, man. It's been like, good, good, good. This guy's super tilted, too. And then he just calls... And then uh, he hits the fucking queen. So that was kind of what pissed me off earlier today. Like, and when he check raises minimum, it's so fucking obvious. But he's also going to have kings there a ton. Like, and I know he's got kings. I know he's got queens. I know he's got jacks. I've seen players min raise there with jacks and actually get it in. Because they can't see the aces. But... That's just fucking gross. He got queens cracked by aces. Or he got aces cracked by queens, and then he cracked my aces with queens. And when I have the ace of hearts on my hand, it's even worse for me when that happens. But, whatever. Yeah, I think I'm going to call it there. That was that was aggravating. That's like the fifth time today that that's happened. And it usually was going all in pre-flop with the queens. I would have really expected him to jam the queens pre-flop, honestly. So I came back at about 1,000, what is that, 4,080. So I picked up a buy-in in this session, which sucks. <laughs> uh, because I had so much more potential, but... For the day, I lost uh, 80 bucks, buy in and a half. It's really nothing. It's just frustrating, and I just kind of have to try to stay positive. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and kill the stream here, and uh, I'll be back tomorrow to play the morning tournaments, uh, probably about 1 o'clock my time, Vegas time. And, uh, yeah, we'll just go from there. Hopefully we get a nice deep run. Uh, today's tournament was the same thing. I got aces in versus queens pre and lost. So fuck it. All right. I'll see you guys.